119 pounds. My teeth are all my own. I stand 17 hands high. <laughs> well, that wasn't very smart of you, Lizzie. He was just trying to open up the conversation. Is that closed? It? <laughs> <laughs> Then about ten minutes later, little Pete came hurrying into the supper table. He was carrying a geography book, and he said, Hey, Pop, where is Madagascar? Everybody mentioned the opinion, and they were all dead wrong. Suddenly, I felt like I had to make a good impression. So I said, Madagascar is in the Indian Ocean, off the coast of Africa, right off the Samoa County. Can I help it if I was good in geography? <laughs> what happened? Go on and buy it. All right. <laughs> 
debt broke, you lent me some money. When I needed a job, you made me a deputy. When I catch cold, you bring me a mustard plaster. And now you want to give me a dog. Well, I don't want a dog. I won't charge you nothing for it, Bob. You never charge me for anything. I don't want a dog. Now, how do you know you don't want them till you see them? I've seen dogs before. Oh, not this one. Oh, he's different. I tell you, Bob, you see this little fellow, and, and you want to reach out and hug him to death. Think I will, huh? Oh, yes, you will. He's real lovely. If they're sitting around in your bare feet, he'll come over and lick your big toe. <laughs> and pretty soon, there he is, dead asleep, right across your feet. How about it, Bile? Well, that sounds real homey, but I'll do without it. Bile, you make me disgusted. <laughs> it ain't right for you to shag up all by yourself with a, with a coffee pot and an old sofa, especially once you've been married. When you lose your wife, the nights get damn cold. Then you gotta have something warm up against your backside. Last night was 104 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you don't like the dog, if you're the kind of fellow that don't like animals. I like animals, Sheriff. If you like animals, you'd have animals. I've had them. Oh, well, that. <laughs> what kind? Well, back in Paleyville, I went out and got myself a raccoon. Well, a raccoon ain't a dog. Like it? 
fix it yourself, do you? Sure do. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say that, Jim. I've been mending my own shirts ever since I became a widow of Aki Pedleyville. <laughs> Lizzie fixes all my shirts. Well, sure is nice to have a sister. Or something. <laughs> did, uh, did Lizzie come back from Sweet River by herself? Well, sure. She went by herself, didn't she? That don't mean nothing. I rode down to Leatherstown by myself a mare. I went by myself, I came back with a mare. <laughs> she didn't go to find nothing, or I'll get it nothing. Don't get ornery, Jim. I just asked a friendly question. Yeah, sure, Jim. Just a friendly question. I don't get ornery. I always say to Jim, the reason you ain't got no real friends is because you are friends. You don't know how to make friends. Yes, I do. Sure, I do. No, you know. <laughs> you ask some fella out to have a drink? No. Say to a fella, come on home and have some supper. <laughs> oh, I guess you're right. Gee, I'm sorry, father. I didn't mean to get ornery. Come on out and have a drink. Supper! <laughs> yeah, come on home and have some supper. Guess I'll say no to the supper, boys, but I'd, uh, I'd be glad to come out and have a drink with you. Well, we ain't got time for a drink, father, but we've been figuring to have you over for supper one of these days. I'll be glad to come one of these days. Well, how about tonight? Don't have the time tonight. Seems there's some kind of outlaw coming this way. A fellow named Tornado Johnson. Have to stick around. Well, you don't know he's coming now this way, do you? Well, they say he's three point bound. Or you don't know he'll be here tonight. I don't know he won't be here tonight. Well, I may be down at Pedleyville or Peaks Junction. He may even be over at our place. Well, I won't be over at your place. You said for me to be friendly. Well, I'm trying to be friendly, but he don't want to be friendly. <laughs> I want to be friendly, Jim, but I don't want to be married. Who says we're inviting you over for Lizzie? You take that back. Won't take nothing back. You take something else. If I didn't think he had it coming, I'd wipe you up good and clean. He had it coming. I guess we all did. Come on, Colonel Head, let's go.
change my dress so I get caught looking a mess. Lizzie, Lizzie. Oh, get down, would you? Don't let Jimmy near the table. We'll make it up. Hello? I'll oh, say, Jim, this is Noah. Who's this? It's Snooky McGuire. <laughs> what exactly do you mean, hot dog? Well, what are you going to say to her? Well, I don't know what she can say to me. Well, watch out. <laughs>
Well, who says we gotta do anything? <coughs> We've been pushing her around, trying to marry her off. Why? What if she don't get married? Is that the end of everything? She's got a home, she's got a family. She's got bed and board and plenty to eat and clothes on her back. That's right, no one will listen to Noah. No, don't you dare listen to her. Why not? She's got everything she needs. She ain't got what'll make her happy. And she ain't gonna get it. Cause you're going at it all wrong, Lizzie. How, Jimmy? How am I going at it wrong? You, you don't treat a man the way you ought to, Lizzie. You, you talk too serious. And if there's anything that scares hell out of a fella, it's a serious talking girl. Well, that's the way Lizzie is, and she can't be anything else. Sure she can, Pop. She's as good as any of those girls down at the ladies' social club. If she can go down to the social on a Wednesday, she can giggle and fart as good as any of them. What do you want her to turn into, Lily Ann Beasley? Lily Ann Beasley gets any man she goes for. Well, I saw her walk up to Phil Mackey one morning. <laughs> she says, Why, Phil Mackey, how many toes do you have? <laughs> and Phil Mackey says, Well, naturally, I've got ten. She says, Why, that's just the right number of toes for a strong man to have. <laughs> Can 
done, brother. It's been done. Where? How? How? Sodium chloride. Pitch it up high, right up to the clouds. Electrify the cold front. Neutralize the water front. <coughs> Barometricize the tropopause. Magnetize occlusions in the sky. In other words, bunk. Maybe you're right. You know why that sounds like bunk? Why? Because it is bunk. Bunk and hokey pokey, and I tell you I'd be ashamed to use any of those methods. What method do you use? <laughs> my method's like my name. It's all my own. Want to hear my deal? We might interest. Not up there. What is it? Pop, you're not going to listen to this, man. Any charge for listening? No charge? Free. Go ahead. What's the deal? $100 in advance. And within 24 hours, you'll have rain. You mean it? Real rain? Rain is rain, brother. It comes from the sky. It's a wetness known as water. Aqua pure. Mammals drink it. Fish swim in it. Little boys wade in it. And birds flap their wings and sing like sunrise. Water. I recommend it. Pay him the hundred, Noah. <laughs> Noah, don't be a chump. Well, you don't worry, I won't. This is a drought, Noah. It's rain. What does he even need it? You won't get a drop of it. Not from him. How would you do it, Starbuck? Now, don't ask me no question. Ah, it's a fair question. How will you do it? What do you care, sister, how I do it as long as it's done? But I'll tell you how I'll do it. I'll lift this stick and take a long swipe at the sky and let down a shower of hailstones as big as candles. I'll shout out some good old Nebraska cuss words, maybe, and you turn around and there'll be a lake where your corral used to be. Or I'll sing a little tune, maybe, and it'll sound so pretty and sound so sad that you'll weep. And you old man will weep. And the sky will get off this tonight. How I'll do it? Girl, I'll just do it. Where'd you ever bring rain before? What town? What state? Since the last place that I brought rain is now called Star. They named it after me. Dry? I tell you, those people didn't have enough damn to blink their eyes. So I get out my big wheel and my rolling drum and my yellow hat with the three little feathers. I look up at the sky and I say, Cumulus! I say, Cumulo Nimbus! I say, Nimulo Cumulus! <coughs> Pretty soon, way up there, there's a teeny little cloud the size of a man's chair. And then over there, there's another cloud looking like a, a whitewashed chicken house. And then I look up, and all of a sudden there's a herd of white buffalo stampeding across the sky. And then, sister of all good people, down comes the rain. Rain in buckets, rain in barrels, filling the lowlands and flooding the gullies. And the land is as green as the valley of Africa. When I rode out there, I saw the prettiest colors of the sky. Green, blue, purple, gold. Colors to make you cry. And me, I'm riding right through that rainbow. Well, how about it? Is it a deal? Well. Ha, huh, no, he's a liar, a con man. That's what he is, all right, a liar, a con man. <laughs> Hurts me to hear you say that, mister. <laughs> Well, so long to you. So long for a sorry night. Wait a minute. You said I was a con man. You're a liar and a con man, but I didn't say I wouldn't take your deal. Huh. Say I would. Pop, you? you're not going to throw away a hundred bucks. How am I going to write that in my books? Well, write it as a gamble. No, I've lost more than that in poker on Saturday night. You get an even chance in poker. Lizzie, I knew an old fellow once, and he had the asthma. He went to every doctor. He still he coughed. <coughs> then one day a liar and a con man come along and took the old boy for fifty dollars and a gold plate watch. The funny thing. After that con man left, the old boy ended up called for one minute before the day was kicked in the head by the horse. Oh, that's a crazy reason. I'll give you better reasons, Lizzie girl. You gotta take my deal because once in your life you gotta take a chance on a con man. You gotta take my deal because there's dying calves in my pick. Because a hundred bucks is only a hundred bucks, but rain in the dry season is a sight to behold. You gotta take my deal because it's a hot night, and the world goes crazy on a hot night. Maybe that's what a hot night is for. Starbuck, <coughs> you got your deal. Tell you, I knew I had a deal the minute I walked into this house. Well, how'd you know that? Well, I see four of you in five places set for supper, and I said to myself, Starbuck. Your name is written right on that chair. <laughs> <laughs> Let's eat. <laughs> Thrown away. No, don't write that, Noah. Write it like this. 
supplement for a king. We pay him 100 honest notes for the fair government of the United States of America. And in return for that hospitality, he did us one small favor. He brought rain. You got that? Right. Well, I don't see no rain yet, mister. I still got 23 hours to bring it. Yeah, well, you better get busy. Yes, Starbuck, you better knuckle down. Now let's not get nervous. Rain, my friends, rain comes to the man that ain't nervous. Well, what kind of rain would you like? You mean we can choose our kind? <laughs> <laughs> and brother, there's all. There's mizzle and there's drizzle. But you wouldn't want that. I generally give that away as a free set. There's trickle and there's sprinkle. But that's for little flower guys. There's little pink little lady. There's April showers that I can bring in April. Sometimes I can bring them in May. There's rain with thunder and rain with hail. Flash floods and storms that roll off the shoulder of the mountain. That's delicate. But don't ask me to tell you, that takes a bit of <coughs> What kind do we get for a hundred bucks? You choose it and I'll bring it. He brags so much, it gives me a pain in the neck. Look, folks, if you all act like she does, it's going to make it mighty tough for me to do my job. Because when there's suspicion in the air, it's a dry season. I don't doubt it. <laughs> well, she don't believe in me. How about the rest of you? What do you mean, believe in you? I certainly don't. Well, then I changed my mind. I don't want your money. Take it back. No, please. We made a bargain. It's set up. Now be a good sport. A good sport? What's he expect me to say? I'll explain to you, Noah. Making rain, it takes a lot of confidence. If you get doubts about me, you start getting doubts about myself. Oh, well, now I see. If you don't bring rain, you blame it on us because we didn't have confidence. Well, we don't. You can steal our money, but that's all we now that's not the right attitude. I got the right attitude. Take back your door. No. What if I need some help? Well, I'll help you. So will Pop. But not him. Well, what kind of help? Nothing he can't do. How about you, lady? Any confidence? No confidence. We don't need her, Starbuck. Take back your door. <laughs> now, what's the first step? Well, what I'm going to ask you to do, it ain't going to make sense. But what sense will a flash flood or a hurricane? No. That's right. Now, what I want you to do, you see that little old wagon of mine? Now, on that wagon, I got a big bass drum. Somebody's got to beat that drum. <coughs> beat it what for? Now, don't <laughs> ask questions. And don't get sensible. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> now, who's going to beat that drum? Me. I'll beat it. Jim, you're going to be my first lieutenant. I want you to go out there and every time you get a feeling for it, I want you to beat that drum three times. Boom, boom, boom. Blow like thunder. Got it? Got it. Every time I get the feeling? That's it. Well, when do I start? Mister, you've started. <laughs> now, Mr. H.C., I want you to pay close attention. Now, in that wagon, I got a bucket of white paint. Now, it ain't ordinary. I want you to go out there and paint a great big arrow pointing away from the house. That's so the house don't get struck by lightning. That sounds reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you only had a mule on the place. We got a mule. We have. That's great. That's just it. Now we're going to link the strong rope and go out there and tie the mule's hind legs together. What? Tie the hind legs of the mule? What the hell for? Please, now, please. You've got to do like I asked. I ain't going to do it. Come on, now. I'll be there. Tie the hind legs of the mule. Mom, wait a minute. I'm ashamed of you. I've been sitting here keeping my mouth shut, waiting to see how far you let this man go and make it a fool of you. You can't make me any more fool than I make out of myself. There's your common sense. Hang on to a little of it. You mean go along with this fella halfway, huh? Well, I can't do that. I'm going to take a chance on him. The whole chance. Without fear of getting hurt or getting cheated or getting laughed at. As far as he'll take it. A white arrow, did you say, Starbuck? A white arrow, AC. I'll take it. Damn it, mister. You're going to get your money's worth. It's a 
the last thing I do. Don't get nervous, boy.
doing? Not a thing. So I ran home for a while. Any calls? The Peaks Junction calls say that Tornado Johnson fellow was seen riding our way. Old Lady Keita calls say she had thunder. How can she? She's deaf as a post. <laughs> I thought I heard it too, but it's too regular. There it is. No, no, that sure ain't thunder. <coughs> Lots of electricity in there. My hair is full of it. Yeah. Mine too. Um, <coughs> Bill, uh, Bill Mackey said the Curry Boys came by. Oh yes, I forgot. Anything important? No. Bill says he saw Jim Curry come out of here wearing a black eye. He did, huh? Yeah, and he wasn't wearing it when he came in. <laughs> now what happened? Tell Phil Mackey to mind his own damn business. Oh, and uh, me to uh, mind mine, huh? I'm sorry, Sheriff. Sheriff? Sheriff, I've been thinking. I changed my mind. About what? That dog you were talking about. Oh, you did, huh? Yes, if the office still holds, I'd sure like to have it. Well, I'll tell you, file. You said you didn't want them, and little Bobby Easterfield come over, and my wife gave them away. Sorry, file. Forget it. Why don't you change your mind about the dog? Oh, I don't know. Didn't have anything to do with the curries, did it? Now, what the hell would my one and a dog have to do with the curries, for God's sake? Well, didn't it? All right. Well, why don't you stop teasing yourself? If you want to get out of this stew, why don't you do it? Why don't you go over and see the curry girl? No, I ain't going to be a dunce with you. Not anymore. Because you were a dunce with one of them, do you have to be a dunce with all of them? I won't go over there and see her and stand there like a stick. Well, don't stand. Sit down. Talk. I make up conversations, but they stay in my head. Well... Watch them out. <laughs> Mind if I take an hour off? <laughs> take, take two hours. Take the whole night. <laughs> no, I think an hour is all I can stand. Sure. 
figured I'd give him something to sleep on. Well, you're sure stretching yourself to make him cozy, ain't you? Well, why not? I like him. Funny, me too. Well, I see he's pulling the wool over your eyes. Oh, if I was out here with my drum, just waiting for that feeling to come, and when he comes over, and we had a nice talk, two of us. What are you trying to sell you this time? He didn't try to sell me nothing, Noah. He just came over, and I was looking up at the sky, and he says, Jim, what you thinking about? Real serious, like he gives a damn. What'd you tell him? He says, not much. <laughs> Very bright mind. Honest. Damn honest. 
does it from here on in if I want to live all alone by myself it's nobody's business but my own wait a minute you're dead wrong wrong how you were. 
trust about me? Everything. The way you talk, the way you brag, or even your name. What's wrong with my name? <coughs> So 
love me, will you? I can nothing to believe in. You're a woman, believe in that. How can I when nobody else does? You've got to believe it first. Let me ask you this. Are you pretty? No, I'm plain. Fair, you see? You don't even believe you're a woman. I am a woman, a plain one. There's no such thing as a plain woman. <coughs> Every real woman is pretty. They're all pretty in a different way, but they're all pretty. Not me. When I look in the looking glass... Don't let no of you look in the glass. It's got to be inside you. And one day it'll be the man who loves you. It'll be his eyes. And you'll look in that mirror. And you'll be more than pretty. You'll be beautiful. It'll never happen. We'll make it happen, Lizzie. Lizzie, why don't you think pretty and... Now let down your hair. Please, Lizzie. <coughs> now close your eyes. Close them. Now see me pretty.
did trap you. No, I see him at the end. Uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> no, Mr. Congratulations. Thank you, Pop. Thank you very kindly. Well, where's Lizzie? I gotta tell Lizzie. Well, where does Sam Hill do you think she is? She's upstairs asleep. <laughs> well, then I'll wake her up. Wait, Jimmy. Lizzie's not up there. Well, where is she, Pop? Where is she, Pop? She's not in the taxi. You mean with Starbucks? Yes. Wait, I got another cigar for Lizzie! <laughs> Just wait a minute. You mean you let her go out there and walk in on that fellow while he's asleep? You didn't even try to stop her? No, I didn't. You called her an old maid. You took away the last little bit of hope she ever had. And when you left, she lifted up those bed linens and she ran out. I didn't try to stop her and I didn't ask her where she was going. But I'm glad she went. Because if she lost her hope in here, Maybe she'll find it out there. That was on your mind the minute you laid eyes on that fellow now, wasn't it? But it all cut and dry, huh? Yeah, well, it's the truth. So what of it? I think it's great them being out there together, Pop. Boy, you know what? They make it real serious. And I'll have a new brother. Well, I'd swap him for you any day. <laughs> <laughs> well, you won't have to swap him for anybody, because he's not the marrying kind, not that faker. I bet he is the marrying kind. I bet he is. Hey, Pop, what do you figure a rainmaker makes? Well, let's be before Andy. Aren't we coming, H.C.? Hello, Bob. We sheriff. Come on up. I can't wait to be visiting any boys. Well, we ain't exactly visiting, H.C. How's Lizzie? Fine, boy. Fine. You just see her a little while ago. Yeah, I know. You and the sheriff? No, no. Well, what can I do for you, boy? Well, I'll tell you, H.C., we've been getting a lot of phone calls from Paleyville and Big <coughs> Jokes all down the state line. They've been looking for a fella. Well, he's a kind of con man, a fella named Tornado <coughs> Johnson. Is she asleep? Oh, who? Is it? Well, I reckon she is. You get any wind of him? Who? Oh. Tornado Johnson. No. Tornado Johnson, alias Bill Harmony, alias Bill Smith. Haven't met anyone call himself or any of those names, file. Anyone else come around here? Only you, file. <coughs> kind of a hot night to be asleep. Yeah, this is a good thing. Yeah, she <laughs> must be. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Tornado Johnson, huh? Nope. Seems kind of fishy. Well, Pesleyville at the junction in three points, we all kind of figured this together and, uh... Well, H.C., look, H.C., we know it ain't like you to protect a criminal. He's really a criminal, huh? Well, he's wanted. What's he wanted for, pal? He's wanted in the state of Kansas. He sold 400 tickets to a great big rain festival. <laughs> no rain, no festival. In a small town in Nebraska, he drummed up an awful lot of excitement about what he called a, a spectacular eclipse of the sun. And he peddles a thousand pair of smoked eyeglasses to see it with. <laughs> no eclipse. In the month of February, he sold 600 wooden poles, called them tornado rods. <laughs> Claimed that if that town ever got hit by a tornado, the wind would blow through there just like a gentle spring breeze. Not her thing. Well, when he left, the town got hit by every blow you can imagine. Windstorm, hailstorm, cyclone, and hurricane. Blew the tornado rods off the roof, blew the town off the mat. Did you hit by a tornado? No, it didn't. That's all I guarantee that it wouldn't get hit by a tornado. <laughs> don't sound like a criminal to me, Kyle. No, he don't. But we gotta do something about him. We ain't locked anybody up in three weeks. Alright, get out of here. I got a few damage. They say this fella carries a big bass drum with him wherever he goes. Whose drum is that? It's mine. I'm figuring on being a drummer. Who painted that big white arrow on the ground? I did. Well, you figured it'd be H.C. A whitewash painter? Maybe. And whose wagon is that? Well, let's go see what's on that wagon, Kyle. What the hell did you do that for? What the hell did you do that for? I don't know. Why didn't you just tell him straight?
straight out, huh? The fellow you're looking for is in the tack room with my daughter. Of course, he's with my daughter. All right. I didn't tell him you were lying. I stood by you this time. But I ain't standing by you no more. No way you don't. I'm going out to the tack room and bring her in. Oh, no wait. And I'm bringing him in, too. He's a pretty quick fella now, and you're a little slower on your feet. <coughs> You want her out there with him? He's a crook and a swindler, and I don't know what else. I'll tell you what else, Noah. He's a man. Pops, right. Getting married's getting married. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, you always say the smart thing with the dumb thing. <laughs> <laughs> Martha Lizzie getting married, Pop. I don't care who the fella is. Is that the way you feel, too, Pop? You know it's not the way I feel. But I'm going. I said stay here. It ain't right, Pop. It just ain't right. No, you're so full of what's right, you can't see what's good. It's good for a girl to get married, sure. But maybe you were right when you said she won't ever have that. She's got to have something. Lizzie has got to have something. Even if it's only one minute, the man in front of the quiet and his hand touching her face. If you go out, you shorten the time you have. If you put one little dark Thank God it took time to see things real. Yeah, well, I ain't got the time. 
sheriff is just a sheriff and he can't see any further than his badge. Is that true, Bob? You know damn well it's not true. Then let him go. Please, let him go. I haven't heard a word from you yet, Noah. A lot of people around here say I was thinking. A lot of people around here think I was breaking the law, right? Nobody that I know of. All right, get going. Get out of here. Well, I'm a son of a gun. Hurry up before I change my mind. Pretty? It's as lonely as dying, I think. Will you come with me? Father. I'm talking to you, Lizzie. Come on. Lizzie! Don't go. What? What did you say? I said don't go. Thunder! Lightning! Lightning! Thunder and lightning! Look at 